Your sisters? Um, well, my God to himself, yeah, it's the awakening to the fact that we're sinners. That is it. Really. Are we born sinners or is that sin is something that is um, when you become in an age where you're able to, as a volitional agent, uh, commit certain acts that becomes yeah. well, sin. Well, it's both, actually. I mean, it's, it's in our DNA from Adam and Eve from the garden. But yes, we, we you know, we're, we're born into sin, but up until a certain age, um, and, and that age might vary a little bit between, but you know, maybe 12, 13, something like that. Um, then, you know, I believe we're, we're innocent, but then we're, we're held accountable for our sin after that. So we do add our own sin to the sin, you know, the, the, the propensity to sin um, that we're already born So we are into. born with the potential to sin, or are we born with a sin no, the, account? Yeah, I mean, we're born with um, that natural desire to sin. Actually. That's the potential to sin. So you're not, like someone can be a potential terrorist, but they're not actually terrorists themselves until no, they commit no. the act. Well, put it this way, even with a young child, you never have to teach them to be naughty, only to be good. So we, you know, we are sinners from birth, but we're not, we, we're not, we're not, we don't have the awareness until a certain age. And that's where the See, real awareness I will, I will, uh, I will disagree, if you don't mind if I disagree with you here. Sin would be defined as an act which is volitional by a volitional agent who has the capacity to perform this act. For example, this fence behind you, we can't call the fence a sinner. It doesn't have this volitional no, no, act or the capacity, right? Be alive, so an act to defy the will of God is what we're talking about. A sin well, is anything that goes against the will of God. Yeah, that's so when right. you do good, as God says good, it's not a sin. Sin would be what God commands you not to do, and you do that. Because you see, as I said, sin is our state, so it's not just our actions, it's our words and our thought life. You know, because out of the, um, the heart come issues of life and come our, our words. You know, like the Lord says, power of life and death is on the tongue, you know? So you're saying sin is a state rather than an action? It is, yes, it is the state of human beings, which is what the Lord says. Yeah, so, no, no one is good, no, not so one. So, a person in coma, uh, is this person sinning? A person in coma, not aware of the surroundings? Well, the thing is, he, he would have sinned before he got into no, coma. At the point coma. where the person is in coma, is the person able to commit sin in, in a coma, coma to state? Well, oh. the thing is that... They, they are, I mean, the thing is that if they go from being, a, you know, say the age of innocence and they're in a coma, well, no, but I mean, if, 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 they're, if they're at that age where they then have, you know, God deems they have that awareness um, and they go into a coma, well, no, uh, come they, they are, I mean, the thing is they're born into sin, that is their state. We are trying to establish what is a sin and whether we are a sinner by birth well, or not. the greatest sin is the unbelief in Christ. Fine, fine. Christ we, can, we can define what is greatest and, and what is lesser, but what itself, because if you don't understand what sin is, then the discussion will not have much benefit. Well, sin is just... So let's understand the comatose patient. A comatose patient, let's say they're in a coma for a year, in a hospital, they're on a life support machine, or not a life support machine, on a feeding machine, they're supported, right, by feeding, in, you know, by uh, parental nutrition and so on, so they're alive, but they're really unconscious in a comatose state. In that state, would you say they're committing a sin, able to sin? They're not aware of the surroundings. Yeah, as I say, they're born into it. So, so what are they sinning? I will say this though, that the Lord Jesus has come to many in a co-located state and revealed himself when Christians are praying. So that person have woken up from a coma, believing in the So the, the person who is in a coma and didn't have any visitation from Christ, is this person able to sin? And how are they sinning? As I said, sin is the state. So if you haven't repented before you go into the coma, yeah. You're no, no, let's not talking state. about the previous state. We're talking about only the state when the person is comatose. The point, point they're comatose and they're still in coma for one year. Within that one year period, are they able to sin and what, how are they sinning? What you have to do, you have to pray. Pray. Well, <laughs> 
is and that's really taking it away from what's important really isn't it i mean unless unless you're planning to be in a comatose state now we know many people know. are in a comatose state you know so many people there are many people in a comatose state you can find them in the hospitals yeah. so the question is to understand what is sin and what is yeah, not this sin, is this is a good illustration to think about. If you haven't thought about it, you can think about it later. If you're unconscious, then you're, you're probably not going to be adding to your things. No. Right, so it's nothing to do with the state, it's to do with your conscious state, which makes you do things. Yeah, when I say state, I mean it's something is in our DNA since the um, you know, it's, it's a part of it. So, so I mean, when you're I'm born, when you're born, yeah. you're either born with a clean slate where there's no sin and where there's no reward, or you're born with reward only, or you're born with sin only. You're saying, out of these three possibilities, clean slate, or only with good as a positive account. Like it's like opening a bank account. You open a bank account, and you're already in debt, negative, £1,000. So, would you open a bank account ever when you're already in debt, like a you know, £50,000 in debt? Would you open a bank account? Would you open one? A bank account, which gives you that option when you open it. <laughs> no. Why not? Because it's not just. Because it's not just and fair. When we talk about opening a bank account, we expect that I open a bank account when I'm not in in debt. So it's an it's a account with zero balance. Then I put money in in my account. I accumulate good or bad. If I've done something bad in the business, my money will be taken away. For example, I will lose. If I am born without a clean slate, in which I have already someone else's sin or a sin on my shoulder, that is not just. Justice means is you start with a clean slate and then you accumulate your good or your bad. That's the Islamic position. But the Christian position from your understanding that you are explaining to me is you've already have sin in your account, which doesn't seem to be very just and appealing. So already I'm having difficulty in even thinking about Christianity as a concept should be something of the truth because truth and justice should go hand in hand. The thing is though, as I said, up to a certain age, because of innocence, that child will, because that child is not able to truly understand sin, to get that true revelation up to a certain age, so that child will go to be with the Lord. So it's only when that person is being old enough by the Lord that then... Um, They're accountable? Yeah, accountable. So accountability of a sin is of, so of a volitional... Thing, that we are in debt, that's the whole yeah, thing, and that's why the Lord Jesus Christ had to come. And yeah. he's come to put his spirit in us, mm -hmm. to completely change us. You see, the thing is that the difference between Christianity and every other belief system, including yours, is that we cannot be good enough to stand before a holy God. Why not? Because we are already, already have that debt of sin. So God created you yeah. in a state where you can't be in front of God. So God created us. In his love and mercy, that's why he sent Christ. So that through believing in Christ, we get born again by the Spirit of God. So that's the solution provided. Completely, yes. So, so I'm going to, I understand that. So it's a solution provided of a problem. Because solution is only for a problem. Right, but I'm questioning this. Why does it have a beginning with a problem only? Because if God is just, you don't expect a just God to create you into a problem and then you need to have a solution out of it. But he has given responsibility to man and woman who he created. Mm -hmm. And they chose, out of the trees in the garden, to eat the one that God told us specifically not to eat. Okay. So as we are... Were they aware of, of that? Yes, they were. Were, were they aware of good and evil? Pardon? Were they aware of good and evil? They were aware that God said that they must not eat from the tree. Now that's a command, but were they aware of good and evil? No, not right. the point So they perhaps, the, perhaps that they have misunderstood because of the command, whether it presupposes good and evil, because they did not eat from the tree of good and evil, did well, they? you know, the thing is, it's about obedience, all right? And sometimes I agree, we, I agree. We have to obey God when we don't quite understand, all right? Because that is the thing, it's like, for instance, if you have children, Mm. They might not understand everything that you yeah. tell them to do. They might be in danger. You might say, move now, get out the way. Oh, yeah. but I don't understand. Why should I? Well, okay. then they could be dead. So right? what happened in the Garden of Eden? Did they talk with God to get this command? Yes, they did. Who did they see? God. 
Who did they see? Yeah. When they were communicating with God, did they see the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? It says that God walked with them in the garden. I want to be specific because... everything for them. Okay, and specific in the beginning, all right, was um, God and the Word. Right? The Word was with God and the Word was God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Spirit hovered over the water. So there you have sure. the three So when one. Adam was communicating with God, yeah. did he communicate with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Do you have anything from the scripture or either the new... I mean, we know it with Yahweh. Right. Do you have any scriptural evidence to support what you say? As I said, the, the word Yahweh, right, so that, that's the God of the Bible, God of Israel, it's Yahweh or Jehovah or Yahweh. And his name, when you look at the text of Grammaton, all right, so the, the symbol for each letter is the Yudha and the Barhe, and that is behold the hand, behold the name. So there you go. So God's name from the very beginning was salvation, basically. Behold it. It's what does Yahweh mean in Hebrew? Um, Yahweh means, well, Yahweh Is it a verb or a noun? Well, it's a noun because it's the name of God. So it means, behold the hand, behold the nail. So when Moses was called an Elohim, not Yahweh. Yeah, he revealed himself in different names. Elohim mm -hmm. is the plural. Eloi is God and Elohim, like cherubim, is plural. Okay. Yeah. So is Yahweh pronounced Yahweh or Iha? Um, for example, if Yahweh. God, I, I want to understand this, I mean, how you have this loss. If God revealed his personal name yeah. to the people to call upon him by this very name, so when we say Allah, Ya Allah, save me, guide me, we call him by this very name, the Ismul Azam, the greatest name. When you want to call him, is it Iha? Sure. Is it Yahuwaha? Ihahu? Yawa? I can give you a long list of variation of this tetragrammaton. Do you know exactly how to pronounce this tetragrammaton? Because there is no vowels within this. No, no, these are only, you are only telling me about the names of the letters. Yod, hey, wow, hey, right? Yod. So, when you combine... No, no, no. When you call, for example, what's your name? My name is Evelyn. Evelyn. If I call you, no, if I call your name is Evalua. Mansur. If I call you Evalua. Evalua, do you think you would um, respond that I'm calling you? The important thing is that the Jews, well, actually the Jews believe that God's name is too sacred even to say. But the thing is... That's what I'm saying, it's a great loss. We are now in the New Testament, not the Old Testament. But God's name is still the same, right? So, but the thing is that the Lord has said that Yeshua, which means God is salvation, or Jesus... No, God saves. Yeah. Not God is salvation, God saves. Well, Yeshua, God, yeah. God is salvation. No, 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 no. Like no. Not what you like. You have to be very clear in the linguistic yeah, terminologies. Yeah. So, um, How many people are called Yeshua so in the Old Testament? Jesus, well, Just to clarify. Joshua was the, the yeah, how many people Yeshua. other than Jesus is called Yeshua? Many. Well, yeah, yes, yes. Does that make them God because their, their, their name is called God is salvation? The thing is... It doesn't. God has made salvation very simple, all right? It's true. A simple name, which is Jesus, Yeshua, different languages have different names. God is intelligent enough to know that if somebody is calling upon the name of the one that died on the cross for them and rose again on the third day, then, you know, Jesus, Yeshua, whatever. But don't you think it's sad that you don't even know how to pronounce no, the name of God? It's completely wonderful. And that you don't know his name, how to pronounce it? It says that there is only one name given under heaven yep. among men by which a man may be saved. What is that name? It's the name Christ Jesus, the name of Yeshua. So if you call on the name of Yeshua, did any prophets call on that name? Did any prophets, did any prophets of the past call upon this name as the name of God? The prophets actually in the Old Testament, yes, they could see. So did Abraham and Moses call upon this name? Afar off. Not, it's not a question of May. When we talk about a historical event that has taken place and documented and narrated to us in the form of the Jewish scriptures, do we find any evidence where 
Prophet Abraham and Moses we called find, upon the name of God as Yeshua or no, Yeshua. That's not my question. That would save the people from their sins. But the question is, when people call upon God, do Abraham, did Abraham and Moses call upon God by the name Yeshua? There is no evidence in the Bible. No, they may not have done. No, it's not they may not. The evidence doesn't exist in the Bible. So we can't just say this is the name of God, because the name of God is where prophets are told what his name is, and they call upon this name. They call upon this name. They should go. Otherwise, who are they calling? Are they going to call what? Um, Ahremanyo, Angrimanyo, Ahreman, Ahuremazda, Venus. Um, the thing is, they didn't have the whole revelation. They, there's many revelations about, like, in Isaiah 9, a child will be born to a virgin. You know, they will call his name Wonderful, uh, Mighty God, Counselor, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. So there you get How do the Jewish people the interpret that? God, which is the child will be How do the Jewish people interpret this verse? How do, how do the Jewish people what? interpret this verse? What does it mean to them? This verse that you've just quoted, his son will be born, he will be well, Prince of Peace. The Jewish people, until they find the Lord, and there are many that have found the Lord, by the way, and are in these days. Um, How did they interpret well, this verse? Interpret it in all During their times? Ways. During their times? Did they think it, mean, it means God has a son which needs to be worshipped as well? The thing is, I don't really want to talk about what isn't. I want to talk about what is. I don't want to talk do you about think it's important? this person did that in unbelief no. and that person do you did think, that in unbelief. Do you not think it's important if you've inherited their scripture, the Torah, the whole of the Old Testament, yes. to really understand their understanding of who God is and how God wants people to live? As I said, it's in Genesis in the beginning. Did they believe in three gods? God, yes, the word of God, which is Jesus, and the spirit of God hovered, hovered over the water. So you've got Elohim, which is a plural oneness. God is for relationship. That's why there were three elements, or the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit. God is about relationship. He's not up there all alone because he's about relationship. That's why he doesn't want to actually necessarily be called Is there a hierarchy between them? So much as a minute by his, na his name of Yahweh anymore. I mean, we can. It's, it's fine to worship that way. But he is my father now. Okay. I have a father in heaven because I have accepted the, the, the um, atonement of Jesus Christ for my sin. So therefore, I am born again by the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, we can argue to your kingdom come, but God has healed me. He's delivered me. You know, my husband prayed for a lad a while ago. Shall I tell you about my experience, how God saved? Leg. Shall I tell you about my experience? Have you heard of it? Yeah, just a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you're telling your, your experience. Put, I, I know it was a yes, wonderful experience. Okay, but I've finished my experience. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I'm sure it's a wonderful experience. If I give you an experience where God yeah, has... I haven't finished explaining my experience No, I want, yeah. to, I want to give you an example uh, without... Yeah, but only after I've finished my example. The reason, why, turn, the, right. re the reason why The reason why. I'm stopping you there. For oh, every... I know why you're stopping me. No, I know. I, no I'm telling you, we can bring <laughs> personal you experiences... Why. I know why. <laughs> no, personal experiences from a Hindu, from a Sikh, from a Muslim, from an atheist, we can bring personal experiences in and how our concept of God, how God saved us, delivered us, we can do that. The Lord Jesus Christ, no, there is no salvation in any other name. There is no deliverance in any other sure. name. There is no healing in every other name. There is no power in any other name because he came back from the dead. Hallelujah. He came back from the dead. He's brought resurrection life. If you receive his is he in heaven? you will have resurrection life. Is he in heaven? He at the right hand of the Father in heaven and he is inside me by his Holy Spirit. Okay. Can I ask you to, for clarification? And it's a new beginning. Clarification. It's made me, I am now, instead of God's em, um, enemy, because God says that the carnal mind is enmity against Christ. All right? So we're born with a carnal mind. And that's why we don't want to serve God. Now, we, sure. we, we may serve what we see as God, and Satan is happy with that, all right? Because they belong to him. But Do you agree we should not worship Satan? No, absolutely not. But right. the thing is, good, good. So let me Satan has many decoys. Let me ask you for a clarification. In heaven, in heaven, who would you see as God? You personally, when you go to heaven, so you will see someone sitting on the throne and someone standing on this right hand side. So is this one God? 
or two gods? Why is one god? Yes, because they are one in the spirit, because God is the spirit. It's so there's a spirit, not flesh. So do you believe in one family of three gods? No, there aren't three gods, there's one god. No, one family of three but gods. Three manif no, three manifestations. But you have two already, one sitting and one standing. It's not a manifestation, it's real, right? God the Father and God the Son through the Holy Spirit. So you have God the Father sitting on the throne and God the Son standing on the right hand side. How many gods are there? Your Lord said to my, my Lord, as in the Old Testament. No, in heaven, in heaven. In heaven. King David said, right, your Lord said to my Lord. Why don't you visualize, why don't you visualize in heaven, you'll see someone sitting on the throne and that's the Father. Is he one God or less than one God or more than one God? By the Spirit, like for instance, if we get married... Excuse me. When you have the Father sitting on the throne... I'm answering your question. I okay. Like go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right. When I, get, when I got married to my husband, the yeah. Lord tells me I'm one flesh. How come there's two of us? Um, All right, because it's spiritual. Sure. There's a bonding. So there's two people, two people, but you call it one flesh. Exactly. God no problem. God so God is two gods. One spirit. No, he's two gods. One but you call one family. Two gods, one yeah, family. Two manifestations, but one no, no. Spirit. Are you two manifestations? You're not two manifestations. Well, You're two people real. Called. Two real people. Okay. Separate but and distinct. Yeah. But you can be united. Yeah. But you still separate and distinct. You have father sitting, son standing, two separate gods, but they're united. That's two gods united. I must stick with the word. The word says that God is one. Right, so it's because God is spiritual, not carnal. You see, we think with our carnal mind because we think through our eyes and through our experience. And it says, you know, the word says that um, Richard, Richard the Second, Richard the Second, who understands the things of man, but the spirit of man that lives within him, who understands the spirit of God, but the spirit of God that lives in a man. Right? Very, very so, nice, very nice. So the thing is. That so, things are flesh and things are spirit, but when we talk about oneness, yeah. because I'm one with God, all right, but clearly Does I'm Does that make you God, though? You're not. Right, but because of the Holy Spirit that lives within me. Yeah, but you're not clearly God, right? No. no. So likewise, Jesus can be with God, but he's not God. But he says, I and the Father are one. Right. And you too as well, one. Did he not say you are also one with God? Yes. So Jesus is one with God and you are one with God because he says, just as I'm the I and the Father are one, I pray that you also be one with us. So you and the God is one, but you still remain not God. Jesus is one with God and still he is not God. But you know what? I will never be God, okay, because I'm not the creator. But I can still be one in spirit with God. Now, it won't happen all of the time because I'm still in this flesh, all right? So I'm, I'm limited in that sense. But when the Spirit of God is speaking to me, at that point that I am hearing and obeying, I am one with the Father, but it doesn't mean that I'm God. Now, with Jesus, exactly, exactly. They are completely one. What do you mean? Spirit, okay? What do you mean completely one? In their who begat who? Who begat who? The Father